Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, I want to talk a bit about the function calling feature that was introduced recently by OpenAI through their playground. So recently we did an overview of function calling with large language models and I did an entire crash course on this. If you're interested in it, here's the video and I will leave the link in the description if you're interested in going through that. After going through that video, I think you're ready to start testing and experimenting with function calling for any of the use cases and applications that you may have. I think what OpenAI has done with this new feature release is that they're making it a lot easier to experiment with function calling and they're enabling that via the playground. So this is a new feature that was recently added to the playground. In order for you to get access to this, you need to have an OpenAI account, obviously. You need to have access to the playground. Right. Once you have access to the playground and you have credits, you go to the chat interface. In the chat interface, you have access to all the models, but you also have this new functionality right here called functions. And this is what the function calling feature is. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to add a function. And to make it simple, just to show you how you can test and experiment with function calling here in the playground, I'll just select one of the provided examples. So here we can do cat weather. I'll select that weather and you can see here that it has automatically provided me a function that I can start to experiment with. So this is about determining the weather in a location. So think of this as, okay, this was a conversational agent and this agent helps to navigate the web potentially and look for weather type of information. The language model itself provides the response to the user. But the agent, in this case, will need to interact with some external API to get access to that information. It could also be a search engine. And so the way that interaction happens is via function calling. So the conversational agent needs to know when to call this particular function. And once that function is being called, you get that information via the API call. I'll show you how it looks in terms of the response that you're getting from the model itself here in the playground, because there's a nice feature to show you that. Once you get that response from the model, then you know, okay, maybe I need to call a specific API, right? Because the model has responded to me enough information telling me that it needs that additional information to be able to send a final response to the user about the weather of the location they're interested in. As a summary, here you have the name of the function, get weather, and the description is determine weather in my location. And these are just the parameters. The properties are really important here, location and unit. So location and a unit is going to be C or F. So this is Celsius or Fahrenheit, and it's an enum type string, an enum. And then you can see this one is type string and description the city and state example, San Francisco CA. One of the required properties here is location. You can see it's enabled here. So what I can do now is I'll enter. So what I can do now is experiment with this. I can just try out a user message. So I'll say, what is the weather like in London? Okay, then I can run this and you can see that this one is a user message, right? The system instruction doesn't need anything because I don't have a specific high level system instruction for this particular example but this is just focusing on the user interaction for now. The model knows that I'm asking about the weather. That's the whole purpose of the function calling. And once you have that enable, you can see that it's calling that function, right? So it says get weather and it gets the location. In this case, it's London. So it's basically going to extract the information of London in this case, of this place, this location, and it's just going to output it for you like this. So now when you go to view code, this is how it's looking. So this is the user and content, the role user content. And this is just a request from a user. So this one is the assistant role. This is the one we just saw. And it says text. Obviously, this is empty. There's nothing in the assistant message. You can see there's nothing, but you can add something if that makes sense for your use case. But you can see also that it includes this tool call, right? So this tool call has an ID. ID is just a function. You can see the function name is get weather. So we know that it's calling that function that we defined that we added. And then it says argument location London. It knows how to extract that information London because we have already given it those properties. So those properties are really important how you define them, right? If you don't define them properly, then the model is not able to really extract that important information that it needs as additional context. It can extract that because it has that in its definition of its function. And you can see that when we go a little bit more down here, 
tools. So part of tools, you will see the functions and you'll see this get weather function and you can see determine weather in my location. Well, it can extract location because of the description we have given it. So we gave it an example as well and that really steers and guides the model to extract that particular information. And so the way it extracts it, it gives you in this kind of object format right here. And you have that as arguments. So now what do you do with this? So one thing you can do with this is you can also here in the playground, you can submit an output. So an output would be, so this is like you're mimicking basically what that function will return back. So again, when you're doing this call, this particular model doesn't have access to external tools, but let's assume that there was access to an external tool already. And here you can kind of simulate that. So what I can do here, if we are calling the API, external API, if we call it with that information, then let's just assume that for now, this is the, the information that we get from that external weather API. So temperature, I'll just call it temperature 18. And then what I can do here is I can do units. So let me just check again, what's the unit that it's using. I just wanna make sure it aligns with this. So unit, right, and we will use Celsius in this case. So let's just assume as an example that it's 18 degrees Celsius in London, not sure how accurate that is, but let's just assume. And then I'll just call this unit, just put it like this. So now we can go and call it. Before we do the call and run this, what I will show you here is you can always go to view code and you can see the progress that you have made. So you can see that besides the user role, the so you see the messages here, right? We're using GPT-4 as a model, but that doesn't matter. You can use all the other ones that enable function calling. Because in messages, we have role user and that's the content. We have another role assistant and that was the content. We already went through that part. And then we have another role called tool. And under this one, we have that information that we're passing it, right? So that is essentially known as providing feedback to the model. That's assuming that you have already gotten that information from that external weather API and you're passing that back to the model as additional context. And that context, the model will be able to use to be able to come up with a proper response to the original question, which was, what is the weather like in London? You're essentially taking that feedback and resubmitting it back. And now when you do your API call in your program, you'll have to copy the entire thing that you see here. And this is why I like this feature of viewing the code, because you can directly copy this and paste it right back into your code. So we need all of that context, right? Obviously, because we don't really know, or the model wouldn't be able to guess what the actual temperature is and the unit as well. So let's get out of here for now and then we can just hit run. Finally, we can see that in the assistant message, the current temperature in London is 18 degrees Celsius. So that basically responds to the user message. All this work that you see here, all this in between stuff here is basically gonna allow or enable the model to use the function calling capabilities to determine what information to extract from the initial request. Once you have that information, which is going to be location London in this case, then you can pass that information to the weather API, right? Let's say this weather API requires location, but it could also be other variables as well. And then once it has the location, it can return back to us the temperature and the unit. And once we have that, we can feed that back to the model. This is why we had to call it over again. And you're basically simulating this because we don't access an actual API in this case. We're just giving it the example. Again, the playground is for experimenting with these things. After you experiment, you take this into code or take it to wherever you are developing your LLM application. And finally, the assistant will respond, the current temperature is in London. In London is 18 degrees Celsius because it has that all that context already. And that's typically how you want to leverage function calling capabilities of these LLMs. So this was a simple example. Hopefully this was clear and this is useful for you. We are already using this for our projects and finding this to be a very useful tool to just quickly experiment with functions. You can add more functions here as well. You can add as much as you want and you can see how it works when you do different types of requests. But that'll be it for this video. Hopefully this was useful. Thanks again for supporting the channel. Please consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And I'll see you in the next one.